hatch lovers rejoice because the front wheel drive king is back. That's right. Unless you've been living under a rock these past few weeks, you'll know that the FL500 Civic Type R has been unveiled before its 2023 launch. We know it's more powerful, faster around the Suzuka racetrack by almost a second, and more restrained in its styling than its predecessor. But the FK8 Type R was never just about numbers. It was about handling, precision, and tactility. So while Honda won't let me drive this thing today, I can do just about everything else to see how this thing compares with its heroic predecessor. I'm gonna poke and pull and press as many things as I can. Where should we start? But first, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And of course, like this video if you enjoy what you're watching. We have loads of content coming up, so it'd be nice to have you along for the ride. Let's start where things matter most in a Type R, the driver's seat, which straight away feels like another triumph in performance car ergonomics. The seats, apart from being absolutely lovely, they look fantastic. They're supportive. They can be sat nice and low in the car. They pinch you and they press you in all the right spots, but they also feel very comfortable. I feel like my back's not gonna ache on a long journey, but I feel like if I'm going around corners quickly, this thing's gonna hold me in position very nicely. And crucially, this steering wheel ahead, which I must say is really lovely in itself as well. It's slightly simpler and cleaner in design than the previous one. It also feels like another ergonomic triumph. It can be pulled nice and close to you. My arms can be slightly bent, or if you rather, my shoulder can be pressed up against the bucket seat here and my wrist can rest on the top of the wheel. Many people would say that's the perfect position. That's Porsche levels of ergonomics. It can be pulled nice and close and my legs can sit on the pedals with a slight bend in them. It really does feel very well thought out and obviously not by accident. Honda has become a master at this stuff as it has become a master at ensuring this six speed gearbox is right up there with the best in the game. In the FK8, the six speed gearbox was fantastic. I think it might have even been the best manual gearbox out there of any car in any class. In this, they've changed it. Stronger gear linkages and a slight tweak to the H pattern, but yeah, that certainly feels as tight and as direct as its predecessor. I think this could still be a masterpiece when it comes to manual gearboxes. And of course, it feels very well matched to the weighting of the clutch pedal. Again, in the FK8, that clutch pedal had so much feel, it meant you could really nail your shift, even with the auto rev switched off. The auto rev in itself on this has been tweaked as well. But the weighting of that clutch pedal all the way down to the carpet and back up feels nice and springy and really consistent all the way down. Fills me with so much hope that this manual gearbox setup and the way this thing feels when you drive it, it's gonna be amazing. Yet, despite all of that, the thing I'm most excited about in this FL5 Type R is the addition of customizable drive modes. So you get three main drive modes. You get comfort, which should have really supple damping like the FK8 did. In fact, that was one of the strongest things from that FK8 Type R. And then you also get sport, which should tense things up a little bit and sharpen up that throttle response a little bit as well, and obviously weight up the steering. And then you get individual, which is the most interesting mode in this car because it's the one where you can mix and match the different things. You can have the suspension in its most comfortable setting, which will be key for British drivers because of our bumpy roads. But then you can also have the engine in its most reactive, most throttle responsive mode. And also the auto rev match as well will be quite quick as well. But if you just want a shortcut to the most reactive, most sporting setting, you just click this plus R button down here. This is your track day button and it will not only weight up the steering, make the auto rev matching its most reactive, but it will also make that throttle response really, really quick. It's right at the top of the pedal. The engine is so, so reactive. This thing is gonna be really, really fun. It would make using this gearbox even more enjoyable. Now, under the bonnet of this FL5 Civic Type R is basically the same turbocharged two litre that you got in the FK8, but with a few key modifications. It gets a more compact turbocharger down here, which works with lighter turbines for faster throttle response. And also the center of the exhaust, the center pipe is slightly thicker. Ultimately, this means more power and more torque. We think about 330 horsepower and 420 Newton meters. Either way, that power is being pushed through a limited slip differential down onto these front wheels where there are Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. They're a very sticky tire. And if I'm not mistaken, both axles are running with a fair bit of negative camber, which bodes very well for the way this thing goes around corners. Now, while this FL5 
is obviously more subtle in design than its predecessor, that FK8 was a mad looking thing, there is tons and tons of aerodynamic functionality all over this car. Down here on the nose, the intake forces air up and through this bonnet vent up here. You have intakes down here, which channel through to an opening in the wheel arch here, and they're there to cool the brakes. Air travels through here, carries the heat away, and then escapes through these vents down here. And then further down the car, you've got as an extension to the side skirts, this little vent down here, this little channel, which pushes air around these wheels. And these wheels, by the way, at 19 inches, are an inch smaller than the wheels you got on the last Civic Type R. So they're lighter, and I think they look pretty good as well. At the business end of the car, of course, you've got this fixed rear wing, which obviously generates more downforce than the previous wing. And it works with this rear diffuser down here, which as I felt earlier, when I put my hand right under, it tucks up onto the underside of the car, meaning it's a proper diffuser. It doesn't hang down like the fake diffusers you see on so many cars right now. So obviously more downforce is produced across the car, which helps to explain why this thing was so bloody quick around Suzuka. This new Civic platform uses lighter materials like the aluminium that's made this bonnet and also the resin that makes the tailgate. And that helps to ensure that despite being longer and wider, this car has a better power to weight ratio than the FK8. Oh, and also this car is lower, which bodes pretty well for its center of gravity. So this new Civic Type R doesn't just promise to be faster around corners and down straights, but also more engaging and lively. And that's saying something because the FK8 was, well, bloody epic. I cannot wait to drive this thing.